Hello, hello everybody. Good evening, wherever you might be. Um, I'm over here in Florida, for those of you who don't know where I live, and I am very, very, very grateful to share that we are safe and that we were able to sort of dodge the bullet of this hurricane coming our way, and for that, I'm very grateful. Um, of course, uh, my heart is also really very much connected to all the devastation in the Bahamas and all the different um, suffering and destruction that they are going through, have gone through, and all the journey ahead that they have to recover from that. But I do feel extremely grateful that we were spared and things are pretty good over here. There's some very gloomy skies happening right now, a lot of rain happening right now as well, but everything is good. And so I wanted to take the chance today, um, Tuesday, for our live training to talk a little bit about what peace in the middle of chaos is about. And I want to talk to you about that in the sacred interiors context because a lot of times we think that part of the interior design efforts we have for our homes is about creating these beautiful, gorgeous, perfect spaces that look like they came out of a magazine. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions I see people have when they think about my work as an interior designer or where, when they think about hiring an interior designer and what the experience might be like. So I always like to be really educational and sort of be able to share a little bit about what living in a sacred space is about, regardless of how beautiful your space might look. And look, I am an interior designer. I design spaces for a living, right? Living intentional spaces. And I love it. I love to talk to you about wallpapers and lighting. I was also a lighting designer for a while. And I can talk to you about Swarovski crystals and all kinds of beautiful chandeliers and all kinds of beautiful, um, stylish furniture and modern styles and traditional and all these beautiful things. But what came to me during this week of preparing for a hurricane that was really, really slow. Oh my gosh, talk about being patient. Like we had different news every day. Sometimes nothing was new. It was like the same thing. It was just such chaos to be in that. Even though part of my lifestyle is very much about staying away from the media in that way and not really feed the anxiety that it causes while still being educated about what's happening, of course. So it was, it was just quite a crazy journey. But what I was seeing during the time that I was cooped up in my, in my place with my children and, you know, getting ready means getting food ready, supplies, water, making sure we have batteries, designating a safe place, a safe room for us to go through the storm in case it gets really bad because we didn't know if it was going to, you know, make a landfall where we were or what the heck was going to happen. But what I was thinking the whole time um, as my girls were trying their best to keep their days busy building forts and playing with all kinds of princesses and dolls and, and whatnot, was also understanding how much anxiety what we were all going through, right? I was anxious. So for some, I go through a storm of this magnitude by myself, you know, as a divorced mom with just my, my girls, you know, there's a little bit of fear that came up with that. Um, and then also so much anxiety that was coming up for them because now they're older, they understand what a storm is like. They have also read about these different storms and um, you know, have kind of had these images created in, in, their, in their mind about what destruction and the power of mother nature. And then they also just saw the devastation in the Amazon and what that, you know, what that caused for them was also a lot of sadness and grief and fear and anxiety. And so as I was getting ready for that, there was so much chaos, right? Not just physically, like there's literally forts everywhere in my place right now dolls and toys everywhere in my place. I had our safe room was the bathroom, my, my bathroom. And so I had sleeping bags on the floor. 
uh, near where the cat litter box would be. Like, that's insane. I would never in a thousand years think I'm going to sleep next to the litter box. The bathtub is full with water to make sure that we're safe or that we have water for, um, you know, brushing our teeth or for toilets. We had food, like a food basket. Um, and then we had like activities, right? Notebooks and sketching books and colors and things for us to do. We had our shruti box so we can chant some mantras together in case we get scared shitless, all these different things, right? And I was getting all this done and, and moving through the motion of awareness of feeling the fear, but also feeling this deep peace, right? Deep peace for my home, deep peace for having even a place to go to, to feel safe, right? In case a storm did come. But as I, as I thought of it and reflected on it on, on, you know, on a vision or during a time where we're not just talking about a storm, but on our everyday life, on your everyday life, what came to me was this misconception we have of a sacred, beautiful place being a place that is not chaotic, that is not disorganized, that is always clean, that is always in perfect shape. And what how much resistance that brings into us and how much discord that causes in our relationships with our children. How many times I was catching myself close to yelling at my kids or snapping at them because they were yet again asking me another time, you know, when the storm was going to come or where was daddy going to be? They were very concerned about their dad because their dad lives right on by the ocean. And so you know, I just really, really made me reflect on, wow, how beautiful it is to remember that we can always come back to our center to be a beacon of peace, to be a light of peace for ourselves so that we don't build up on these fantasies and worst case scenario stories that our mind gives us, but so that we can also be that center for our children who really need us because if I let them really see how anxious I may have been at times, it wasn't going to be helpful. And I wasn't trying to hide my anxiety. I was just trying to really do my job at being connected with it and allowing it to communicate with me what it needed to communicate. And so what I'm saying with that is I would like to invite you to take the mindful um, interests that you might have in your life right now, whether you're a graduate from my academy, where, whether you're currently in the program, maybe you just enrolled, or maybe you're on the verge of enrolling and you just haven't made the plunge yet. What I want you to remember is that we have different tools to cultivate peace within ourselves so that regardless of how much chaos there is outside of us, we can still feel that same level of peace. We cannot expect, this is something I've been talking to so many people about, we cannot expect our peace, our comfort, our stability, and our calmness to come when things are in place, when our house is in the right space, when our marriage is in the perfect situation, where, when our finances are in the perfect situation, when we get the job we want. When we do that, we're constantly expecting external things, external people, external situations to give us that which we need to give ourselves. So in the sacred interiors context, I always share with you how much more than decorating your home we go into my program, how much deeper than just giving you color palettes and lighting designs we go sure we do that and that's super cool so much fun we love it it becomes a reminder of your hopes and values it becomes an opportunity for you to cultivate more joy more pleasure more con connectedness with yourself every time you enter one of your rooms that you design um, or that we design together it gives you an opportunity to have those reminders visually and around you and all of that. But I want to remind you that if, regardless of where you're at in the academy process with me, if you're still thinking that your peace is going to come from anything external, you are still not aligning within yourself. And that's why we start there. That's why during my academy, we spent the first three weeks going deeper into creating this crystal clear vision of what your 
relationship with yourself and with your life is about and then we get into the knickknacks of all the other fun stuff that is the physical material stuff but this weekend um it just it really hit me like I was sitting there one day I was sitting in that bathroom and I was just like sort of camping out with the girls right we were just kind of trying out what the safe spot was going to be and I was sitting there with with fear but also with gratitude you know of it doesn't matter how bad it gets it's gonna make me cry I really feel like we can be okay and that is such a beautiful place to be in because once upon a time, I didn't think I would be okay. And so I just was in my heart to share that with you, um, whether you're a mother or you're not a mother, whether you are um, already on the route of creating a sacred interior or creating a sacred home, a sacred space, or this is totally new to you. I just want to be a little bit of inspiration for you to remember that we don't have to live the same way we have been taught. We don't have to live in the same chaotic way that we have been accustomed to and used to. We don't have to live in the same way